Wondering what you can do to establish more trust and close more transactions. Today, I'm excited because I got my buddy Kevin Wagaman, CEO from Florida Network Realty over in the Northeast Florida region. We're going to talk about some specific three-step strategy that you can use that I know is going to help you serve your clients better. All right, Kevin. So this is one I've been looking forward to. You know, I'm, I'm obviously um, getting the uh, privilege to be your accountability partner to you, basically That's to good. get to talk to you every single day for 30 days. We've gotten to know each other, you know, it's been and fun. Um, it, it has been. And one of the things that I've just I've really come to admire about you is, is how purposeful you are on trying to help agents really frame out how they can grow their business. And one of the biggest things that when we were talking one day, you were telling me about one of the uh, sales meetings you've been doing, um, really to give agents the ability to differentiate themselves. And um, I really want to just kind of dive into that today if we can. And so if you don't mind, just kind of give us a little background on what brought that on and what the thought process was in this kind of giving them the ability to really set themselves apart. Yeah, uh, thanks, Jimmy. And thanks for having me. It's been a lot of fun uh, chatting with you over the past 30 days. And listen, when we when we coach our agents and we do sales meetings and one on ones, you know, we our, our goal is to really um, kind of simplify what can be a really complex uh, situation, and that is real estate transactions. And so what are we really going for? And when we are uh, sitting down with a potential buyer or seller or someone in our sphere of influence, and what are we trying to accomplish? Well, we're trying to accomplish establishing or growing a trusted relationship. So it's trust. And so when we start thinking about how are we presenting ourselves, what are we doing uh, before, during, and after the transaction to elevate our trust game, if you will, we start looking at ways that you can really solidify that uh, with your people. And so if trust is the most important thing in real estate or the most important word in real estate, which frankly we think it is, uh, first, we have to understand that trust has two components, and there's character and there's credibility. And so we constantly hear people new in the business in some instances where it's, you know, my best friend or my brother or recently even my father chose a different realtor. Uh, what's going on? What's happened here? Uh, it's not necessarily that they don't trust you in terms of character. It's that you're now handling people's largest assets and uh, the competency side or the credibility side uh, needs a little work in some cases. So what are some things we can do? And we call it the, the three questions. What are the, what are the things we can do kind of our pregame before we go sit down with somebody uh, buyer seller uh, uh, price reduction conversations too, by the way. Oh yes. There's such thing as price reductions with our listings. We're going to start seeing them again eventually, but um, what do we, how, what's our pregame? What are we, what are we, what are we checking in on before we go have those consultations? That's kind of how it evolved, Jimmy. Yeah. And Kevin, this is what I loved about this too, is you and I kind of were talking about this during our time each morning. Um, and you and I were saying, you know, this really applies. And I've taken this, when you said it to me, I've begun to apply to any meeting I'm going into. I don't care whether it's where I'm having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with someone, whether I'm having a group sales meeting. So, you know, we may have uh, broker managers that are in here, or we may have trainers that are in here, um, or specifically agents that are, that are meeting with clients, whether it's buyer or seller, this same format applies in every situation. This is what I loved about it. It's so universal. So let's kind of get into this. And why don't you tell us about the first, about the three things, and then let's break each one of them down, if you don't mind. Sure, no problem. And yes, you're absolutely right. You know, this is pregame. So whether you whether you uh, do a one-step consultation or a two-step consultation, whether you do, uh, you know, exclusive with your buyers or you don't, it, 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 these are the kind of the questions that apply to any given situation. You kind of have to work your own, your own uh, program into it. So the first question I'm going to ask myself as part of my pregame is how am I going to resonate? You know, and the, 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 the normal sales uh, cycle talks about establishing rapport or connection. I like the word resonate because it would resonate. How am I going to, how am I not only going to establish that rapport, but what is, what is almost the residue that I leave when, when I, it sounds weird, but when I leave the appointment, what are they saying to each other? Wow. I really like that realtor. Well, you know, that they were funny or I really enjoyed that. That was fun. Or man, we really need to work with that person. That's, that's to me is, is resonate. So uh, that's question number one. How will I resonate? We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Yeah. Question number two, how will I and how oh. does my company differentiate? Right. So I like words that rhyme. So how will I resonate and how does my company, how do I differentiate? And again, if you're the lowest cost option, maybe not that important, uh, but if you're trying to build value, then certainly need to know the difference makers uh, as well. So number two, how will I differentiate? <clears throat> and number three, 
uh, how can I substantiate? So the proof, the proof in the pudding, right, is, is right. what are what are the things that I can point to now that we've established that uh, there's a difference between agents and a difference between <clears throat> companies, excuse me, you, uh, you know, what am I pointing to that shows, yes, there actually is, that is, that is uh, tangible and relevant for a potential buyer or seller. Yeah, listen, um, this right here, those three things, if people can learn how to do that. And um, as, as we and I, we started talking about this, I started kind of evaluating when I would meet with people. There are certain people that have gotten this down. They don't even realize they're doing it. And sure. those are the best salespeople. What I, I had a, uh, we had a listing tour yesterday. And as I was talking with people, and I had a couple meetings with agents yesterday, some of our top producers, as I was sitting with them, I realized, you know what? They're doing what Kevin's talking about without even thinking about it. So it does almost for the really good salespeople, whether they realize this process or not, they begin to do these things in almost every conversation. Um, let's go back and let's start with resignate um, because I think this is where it all starts. This sure. is that connection. This is where the conversation becomes something that is not adversarial, but it's almost like we're connecting with them. Let's talk about some specific things we can do to resonate with people, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah. And, and to your point, yes, yeah, some of this is very intuitive and, and, uh, and it may even be obvious for some that have been in the business for a long time. I'll, I will say, though, in coaching new agents all the way up to super experienced agents, in some instances, when we start peeling back the layer, if someone's going through a slump or maybe not hitting on all the listings that they, that they want to be hitting on, in a lot of cases, when we start asking these questions, it could be that they, they might start skipping some of these steps because they've reached a certain level in their career. So it's good to kind of go back and, and check in on these things every once in a while. So <clears throat> resonate. Okay. So the first part of resonate is obviously asking great questions. I mean, I think we all know that being, being a great asker of questions, uh, and by the way, also a great listener goes hand in hand. And do you care about the answers? <clears throat> because that can be felt. In fact, uh, I would say that one of the X factors of the amazing agents is not only their ability to, to ask questions and listen, but their communication of empathy is off the charts, uh, relatively speaking. So that's like an X factor is do you care and can you communicate that caring? <clears throat> Once you do that, uh, you know, we don't, we don't want to necessarily launch right into our competitive advantages quite yet. There are some other things that we can do uh, upfront in our consultations and even spread throughout. And one of them is, and I would, I, I would really examine this uh, before, you, before you take it into a consultation, but why, you do, why do you do what you do? Why are you in the business? And I think we've all either seen or heard of, uh, Simon Sinek has a TED talk called Start With Why, uh, Sweat the Nation, I don't know, probably 10, 12 years ago now. Uh, there's a book associated with it, it's a great book. Um, but think about why, you're, why are you in the real estate business? And sometimes we talk to people and it's, well, I like houses and I like people. Well, if you start peeling back the onion a little bit, there's probably something a little bit more. And think about how powerful it is uh, after you make, a, make that connection with someone that you're asking questions and caring about what they're saying. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, let me tell you, before I get into, you know, how we're going to help you solve your problem, let me talk, talk to you a little bit about why I do this. You know, when I was growing up, you know, my, my, my father was a developer and we moved around a lot. So, so home became very special to me, a place of sanctuary and security. And, and it was really just a really, I, I started developing a feeling for how special and how, how, how important the idea of home is. And then my parents split up and I saw my mom get, you know, handled, handled differently by certain realtors that really kind of affected her in a negative way, an emotional way. And then I saw people that became her best friends. And so you put all that together. And I just want to make sure that people make great real estate decisions with confidence and clarity. And I know that I'm going to take really, really good care of them. That's why I do what I do. If you have something like that, then you want to, you want to communicate that because that gets to the heart of, 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 of people. And so think about your why, go a little bit deeper. And if you need a little inspiration, then check out the book, Start With Why. I think that's a great uh, point of connection. Uh, so Kevin, you've been doing this with a number of agents. I'm sitting here, I'm thinking about this and it is different for everybody. And a lot of times I think people um, have trouble getting to that, that portion of why is it the why, but it is a, it's an emotional tapping into something that when things get difficult, it helps you do the business better. But it is also a thing Everybody wants to be a part of something that's bigger than them. Sure. So when I sit, when you sit down with sellers and you sit down with buyers and you're like, hey, listen, this is um, this is about more than just this house. You know, we, we've taught that where it's like, hey, let's talk about the fact that um, this is um, I want to I get that I get the opportunity. I'm going to use this as an example to be able to help you find the place where every memory that your child has is going to have some foundation in this place. Yeah. I, I get the opportunity where, you know, I can't wait 
for those memories that are going to happen around the kitchen table, whichever in whichever house we have. You know, when you start tapping into those emotions and you and you begin to just build that, you know, that re where you're resonating with something bigger than just the process. All of a sudden now it's there. Here's what I see happen sometimes, Kevin, is there's a big difference in, in from a referral standpoint later on, because ultimately, if we do this correctly, these are going to be these are seeds that are going to not only be this transaction, they're going to be referrals and things along that line. One of the things that I love to see also is, is that when we connect on that level, the difference, and I've watched it over the years, when someone introduces someone as their friend versus someone that introduces them as their realtor, you know what I mean? It's a huge difference. And when you get and you tap into these whys, all of a sudden now it becomes more of a relationship than just the transaction. So this is really, really good. Um, anything else you've seen on that that part of that process? Yeah, just to close, just real quick, you know, with us, we, we have a concept forever agent. What are you doing between, not during the transaction, what are you doing before and after right. the transaction as well? Are you the resource? Are you doing the annual real estate portfolio reviews? Um, What's your involvement in the community? Does your reputation precede you? What are you doing in the community? And how about um, what's your online reputation or your social media reputation? Are you providing value there? All of those things can kind of create the scenario for you to, um, to uh, accomplish to resonate uh, in, that, in that meeting. And by the way, here's a pro tip. This came from one of our agents, one of our top agents we met with recently. If she doesn't know the people, if she knows them, she's already friends, she loves them. But if she doesn't know the people, she'll sit outside in her car. You know, we all get going real fast and all right, here's another listing appointment. She'll sit in front of their house in her car for a minute and, and repeat to herself, I love these people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do everything I can to serve them. I'm going to take better care of them than anyone else. And that's her mindset going in. So she just pauses. And I absolutely love this. She pauses before she, and remembers what you know, what's truly important before she walks into that house. So anyway, that's the resonate side uh, in, in, in short form. But um, uh, uh, that, by the way, might be the most important one. You know, when I was uh, when I was newer in real estate, um, I, I, I walk out of a listing consultation and think, man, why, why didn't I get that? You know, why, why didn't that no go better? Well, they didn't like me. You know, when I, I, I got, I got all excited about stats and my company and competitive advantages. I could start going full bore on that and realize, you know, pretty quickly that people didn't like me. And yeah. so, uh, so make sure we were focusing on, on uh, establishing that rapport with people. Oh, man, that's so good. And foundational to everything, obviously there. All right. So now we're, we're at the appointment. We've had that time where we've been able to connect with them. We are resonating yep. with them. Now we get into uh, the next step. And what is that step to differentiate? Yeah. How do I differentiate? And so the questions to ask yourselves are, are, you know, what do, what is my company? What do I do that no one else does? You know, what are the true competitive advantages or USPs or whatever you want to call them? And what do we do that, that we do better than, than uh, others? And, and, and so, and then I would take that one step further. So now we have the answers. So that's an exercise, by the way, that's going to be unique to, unique to every company. We did this across sales meetings in our offices. We got a hundred answers and, you know, really, really good uh, information. So it's an exercise that you'll want to do uh, for yourself and for your company. And then, so, <clears throat> But then switch it. So now that we know what, what our competitive advantages are, let's frame it in a way that we are now applying it positionally to their property relative to other properties on the market. So here's what we do differently. And by the way, this is, this is the, these are the advantages that your property will have uh, positionally in the marketplace compared to other properties that, you're, that, that are also on the market. That's the mindset. That's the thought that we want to take before we get into, you know, whether it's agency or whether it's the power of the brand or the, or the global marketing, you know, what, what, you know, the old future bridge benefit concept kind of, you know, to, to put it simply, how, how does it, how does it really reflect on the person and their, and their property? And by the way, everybody, Jimmy, as you know, says that they have the best marketing. Right. I mean, <laughs> so if you're going to say that, if you're going to say, well, our marketing program is better, just know specifically, is it an affiliation with the Wall Street Journal or are you doing something with Jawai or, or you know, it, are you translating the listings into different languages and currency? You know, what are those specific things that you can point to that do make those differences that are going to impact their property? You know, Kevin, this is one thing um, uh, we used to really coach too, is um, I would literally sit in appointments and say, hey, listen, I'm not from Missouri, but I completely agree in the um, show me state. 
And then that was when we would unload and we would show yeah. the actual marketing. We would show the yep. difference in those things. Um, so when we're differentiating, we're not just, you know, we're differentiating a couple of things. It sounds like to me, it sounds like we're differentiating um, us as individuals, as the agent, we're yep. differentiating the marketing, we're differentiating their house versus the competition. Um, are there specific areas that you try to focus in on with the differentiation there? So, well, certainly what, I mean, the, the point would be you take whatever those, whatever is true for you and your company. It might be, um, for, for some of us, it's, it's, it's the credibility of the brand because if you walk in with, uh, I'll pick on us for a second, with a Berkshire Hathaway name that's, you know, number one on Forbes, number six on Fortune, and I, it, it, we, we have incredible uh, reputation. Well, that, that adds credibility there. So that's, that's one of them. But like I mentioned, the global marketing, you have to, you have to really understand what that means and what's different. I would say, uh, and underutilized, I was talking to Alan Dalton about this recently, but uh, what's your negotiation process? What's your negotiation plan? How do, you, how do you differentiate in terms of one of the most important things that we do? Can you articulate what your negotiation strategy is? Uh, and of course, uh, Jimmy, one thing that uh, we, we could all do better as, as, a, as an industry is a communication plan. And so, yeah, I would say, you know, look for the things that are true for you. For some of us, it's, you know, single agency versus transactional broker. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things. You just have to peel back, peel it back and, and see what really is uh, not only a, a difference maker, but also is going to be valuable to the consumer so they can, they can take that. Like brand is a tough one, you know, well, so if I'm a seller, you know, why, why do, you know, why do I care? Well, it could be peace of mind. It could be, it could be um, that buyers may be, when you think about the sign in front of the house, there, there is a, there is a, 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 an affiliation between the sign in the yard and the credibility and the quality of the home as well. So these are some things that you can kind of get into a little bit more detail on instead of just saying, Hey, we, we've got this marketing plan. And I'm not saying anyone's just doing it that simply. And this is hyper, right. hyperbolic, but you know, you know, really what is in it for the consumer and their property. Hey, this is a great time. Give a little, um, you gave a little pro tip earlier. I'm going to give you one of mine um, because this was like you mentioned. If you look and you see the most, uh, the biggest complaint that uh, when they poll everybody, consumers, the biggest complaint they have about realtors is a lack of communication. Oh, yeah. So one of the things that I, that we always try to do is, is to teach the agents to have a set plan. So if it's every Friday, you're going to communicate with your listings or every other Friday, whatever it is, lay it out. Tell them what it is and say, hey, listen, one of the biggest complaints we have in our industry is, is that we don't have communication. And so I want to give you some assurances here. This is the process we have. That's, again, differentiating yourself from some of the competition, giving that peace of mind. So without without question, Jimmy, just take that one step further. If you're if you're doing that, that also minimizes the inbound. If if if, if you have a if you have a good communication plan and you're following through on it, then they know to expect a phone call from you or a, or a communication from you. Um, that's when they're going to hear from you on X, Y, and Z. So you, 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 you might minimize some of the inbound calls that you get coming from your sellers and your buyers if you're doing a good job doing that proactively outgoing. I, I love that. That's, that's, yep. that's so smart. So here we are. We're in this meeting, this appointment, whatever it may be. We've yep. got to the place where we've done the, where we've resonated with this person. We've yep. set, set out some of the things, how we're different. Now where are we going to head? And basically we're heading in towards the end of the appointment, I guess, here to really try to get this to a head, basically bring it to a head. Yeah. Well, so what's the, well, how do we substantiate? What's the proof? I mean, what are, what are you bringing in terms of materials to show or what's your digital package look like when it comes to, uh, do, are, are you measuring your sales rate? Are you measuring your average price per transaction? Uh, what about for some of you, you have tremendous market shares or your company. If you're a new agent, then look to your you look to your office or your company in terms of what their market share numbers are, what they can, what they can show. And charts and graph, and then it's uh, it, you know testimonials. Um, you know what are you doing with testimonials, and and, and are you proactively getting those not only um, through uh, you know into your Google and some of the other review sites, but are you is that part of your marketing materials? And and Jimmy, I, I'm sure you've probably done this if you haven't. I, video testimonials. I mean, Absolutely. I think there's a tremendous opportunity, and and you can speak to this probably better than I can. But for agents to really start you and harnessing the power of video as part of their buyer and seller uh, packages, um, asking people, hey, why don't you talk about how great I am as opposed to me having to do it? Um, so have you guys done anything yet with that yet? Uh, video yeah. Testimony? yeah, we have. And Kevin, you prompted me here. Um, and that's why I was making a note just a second ago also is because before you even said it, you would prompted me to circle back to this. One of the things that we've done is, is obviously we're, we're preparing a video pre-package in some ways 
before we even go into the appointment. So we're kind of setting the stage. We're setting the standard. We're saying, hey, here's some things you can expect in the appointment. And then we, what we did on the ones that were the most effective is, is on the back side of that, we would have a few video testimonials that we would say, and listen, it's one thing for us to say it, but it's a whole other thing for some of our past clients. Here's what a few of them had to say. And we just lead into that portion where we're giving them those video testimonials. And so in other words, we're not continuing um, like you said earlier, everybody's going to say they're the best at marketing. Everybody's going to say they're going to handle their clients the best way. Everybody's going to say that they can get them the highest price. So we typically try to do with three things on these testimonies, on these video testimonies. I'm going to start with the seller side. We wanted to hit, make them hit three things. The biggest concerns people had typically are, can you get me the highest price? So we wanted to have somebody that would basically, we would prompt in their video testimonial that was just basically say, listen, um, they maximized our price. We were able to get more than we anticipated. Can't say enough about the way that they helped us maximize our equity. Second thing that most people are worried about is, um, you know, what's the timeliness of this? You know what I mean? Right. And then the third thing was, what is it? How do, you know, was it stressful? So we really would just basically come in. We'd have the first one was going to be on the price because that's the highest. The next one was is the, the stress level. And we'd have somebody that say, hey, listen, I've done and sold a number of homes. I've never had a transaction that went as smoothly as this. The systems that Jimmy had in place, for instance, were the best that, you know, was the best process we've ever had. Can't speak enough about how convenient it was. Third one then is, hey, listen, we had a set time frame where we had to have our kids in school. We communicated that early and then Jimmy was able to help us produce that. Then we just basically are framing these in a way that we're answering the questions we know they're going to have before we even get to the appointment. Um, and that's the way we utilize those. So let's talk a little bit about the substantiate. Give me some more examples. You mentioned like the, I mean, you're coming in with charts. Are you coming in with like just reports or what does that look like when you're substantiating some of that? Yeah. So, you know, it, it it could be charts, it could be reports, graphs, you know, it, 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 do, do you have a, a high market share in your, in your area? And right. if so, what does that look like? What's your, you know, sales rate? When I say sales rate, I mean, you know, sale, you know, say it listing sold compared to how many get expired or withdrawn. Now, right now, everyone's running at almost a hundred percent sales rate. So uh, that might not be a huge competitive advantage, but at some point, you know, what's your average price per transaction? What about your office and what, what's accomplished there? If you're if you've got a lot of experience and have a lot of transactions, I would absolutely have a visual, a map that shows, you know, pins on all the homes that you've sold in the various areas. Uh, it can be extremely powerful to to Jimmy's point, reduce their stress level and give you a little bit extra level of uh, credibility. But I think a big one, Jimmy, is the testimonials. I mean, people people don't connect as much with charts and graphs. It's impressive, but if you have other people talking about, to your point, I love your three things that you have. You, you, you bring you bring some you bring a process to it so it's not just wide open hey tell me what you thought I think right. that's really I think that's really smart because you know it, it's it's uh, that's that's the that's the final piece and if you've accomplished all three of those things you've gone a long way in establishing a level of trust with people and because they like you and they know you know what you're doing and they know there's a difference between you and the other agent or the other company and you know and if you're newer, uh, this is super important. And just one more comment on the establishment of trust for if I can speak to the newer agents for a minute is if you have that character and you have that passion and you have everything going for you on that side, that's that's the biggest part. If you're trying to increase your credibility, I'll tell you the quickest the quickest path from zero to confidence is market knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the better the better you are at getting yourself from a, a low level to a high level of market knowledge by go into your sales meetings by talking, you know, by looking at the hot sheet on MLS, if you have one of those by I practice CMAs, I know CMA or market price analysis, whatever you want to call it, or a thing of the past, they're, they're going to come back, but start doing those. There's no way to get a better level of understanding of a market if then than if you're practicing doing those types of those types of things, because that'll get you to a level of confidence um, yeah. uh, sooner than later. Absolutely. And I want to I want to wrap up um, with one other thing that we're doing right now, because you mentioned the video testimonials. Then I want to come to you and just let you put the put a bow on this package, so to speak. Um, so basically, you know, one of the things that we're doing, because not we don't always have the video testimonials and not everybody's comfortable doing those things. Right. Let me give you what we're doing right now. And if anybody wants a copy of this template, I'll be glad to send it to you that we're doing. We have a templated really high, high gloss paper, basically, that has the picture for the agent with their contact info. And at the top, it says, here's what others have to say about us. 
And literally it is a, you know, it's a two page and it's little boxes that are shadow boxes that basically have the quotes from those folks. Again, we're highlighting and you'll notice it if you see one of these, we're highlighting specifically if it's a buyer side, because we'll do one for buyers and one for sellers, we'll highlight certain things that buyers are looking for. Um, really helped me walk through the process when I wasn't sure what the next step would be, you know, helped us meet our, and we closed on time, which was very important to us, you know, the things that a buyer has. And then we have a seller one that has those things we just talked about, which is obviously, can you maximize my price? Can you reduce my, the, my, um, my stress in the process? And did, can you meet the schedule that I need? So we have that sheet that we use and it's just a part of it. It's literally just, they just have them. They just grab them. They put them in their listing packet when they go out. And again, it's an easy one just to put in front of people and do that. So Kevin, I love this. This really is, it's a very, it's a very systematic process that anybody can follow to build the trust, to substantiate where they're at and really differentiate themselves. You want to wrap us up with kind of anything you want to say in closing. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's it. Uh, establishment of trust. That's the key. That's when you strip everything else away, the most important word in real estate, that's what we want to, that's what we want to get after. And, uh, and thank you, Jimmy, for what you do to bring these, this type of messaging out to the broader community. Uh, I've seen your work. Love your show. Uh, you're my guy, Kevin, you know that. So <laughs> make sure you reach out and let Kevin know, make sure that he knows how much you appreciate his transparency with sharing with the industry. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.